I am a 35-year-old woman and my husband is 37. I discovered the other day he had bought a PlayStation 5 as a gift for himself. The thing is, he used my money to do so without my permission, utilizing a portion of my emergency savings that he had access to in case of, you know, an emergency. I do not believe getting your hands on a new video game console classifies as an emergency. This led to a huge argument, and I took the console away and reboxed it up. I debated on returning it to the shop for the money, but I know my sister has been struggling to find one for my nephew for over a year. So instead I wrapped it up and took it round to hers and put it under the tree and quietly explained what it was and what had happened. My sister then gave me the money for it. My husband went ballistic, shouting and demanding I go get it back, which I of course refused to do, telling him as it had been bought with my money, it was my choice what happened to it. He is now sulking and refusing to talk to me and acting like a huge child. For anyone curious about our money situation and why I'm so angry, we each put half of our salary into a communal fund for the house, bills, groceries, etc. The other half is ours to play with as we want. My husband always blows through his and never saves a penny. As I'm more realistic, half of my expendable money goes into savings for emergencies. He refused to pay me back as it was an emergency. So, am I inconsiderate in this matter? And should I have let him get away with it? He refused to pay it back because it was an emergency. Say what? Not the idiot, OP. It's your money that he technically stole. He's a grown adult and should know that emergency money is for an emergency, not for a brand new gaming console. Since it was bought with your money, it's yours and you could do whatever you wanted with it. If he wants a PS5, let him work and save up for it. Not technically, he did steal it. And since he doesn't seem to understand that, OP should remove his access to that emergency account. At least her sister paid her for the PS5, so she's gotten her money back. Now she needs to make sure he can't jump back into the account and take it again. He's sulking, so he hasn't learned from it. So next time, he'll make sure you can't get to the item to get your money back. And dump him, OP. He stole money from you and is now being a child over being found out. And a PS5 is hard to come by. To get one from my household, I had to join two Twitter groups for alerts and be willing to sit on a site hitting refresh for up to 45 minutes. It took me three weeks of full-on dropping everything for every sale that popped up for me to get lucky enough to snag one. There's no way he just happened upon a PS5. He was just hoping OP would let him get away with it. Not the idiot, but you guys have bigger issues. Healthy relationships don't lead to one party going into the other's emergency funds to spend on a console. You probably could have handled it better. I'd be selling it on eBay and making my money back and then some, but I think you need to maybe look into some couples counseling. Everyone's the idiot here. Your husband sucks because he's fiscally irresponsible if he's blowing through his money every time. If that were not the case, then I'd say depending on his video game interest, the ability to buy a PS5 could be an emergency of sorts. They've been out of stock essentially for over a year. In fairness, locating and getting a PS5 right now is an emergency. But of course, that is assuming he could replace the emergency money quickly. You suck because you need to get your finances in order. In a marriage, there shouldn't be your money and their money. You're married, it's both your money. When you retire, will one of you have a better retirement than the other? If you can't trust your spouse with one of the most basic needs in life, is that someone you want to be with long term? Update. I have emptied the emergency account that he has access to and put it all in my personal account that he does not have access to, including the money I got from my sister for the PS5. I'm a 28-year-old guy. I've had the same close friend group since freshman year of college, so 10 years now. There are five of us. Every year we like to take at least one trip. Sometimes we do two like we did last year, with airfare being so low. This year, technically next, we plan to go to Austin, Texas in March or April. All of us had heard great things. By the end of November, we would like to book the Airbnb. We actually decided on Austin back in June, but we have to plan the trip for the spring due to some work schedules and a wedding we will all be attending. The problem lies with my buddy Craig. 
Craig is a great guy and I love him, but he's always been a little odd. He doesn't have great social skills and never does great with women. He's just kind of an awkward guy, but still one of my best friends. So Craig is our age. He turned 28 in April. Well, in September, Craig decided to introduce us to the girl he was seeing because now they made it official and our boyfriend and girlfriend. Craig is dating Mary, who is freshly 20 years old. She celebrated her birthday a few weeks before she matched with Craig on an app. I'm sorry, I don't want to be judgmental, but yikes. It's awkward because the rest of us feel so weird around her. She's younger than all of our younger sisters. But like I said, Craig is just kind of like that. He hasn't had a serious girlfriend in many years, too. Well, for the trip, three of the guys, including myself, are bringing our girlfriends. Craig is now asking that we consider changing the location to somewhere Mary could go. I guess she has a fake ID. Good Lord, why are we with someone who still needs a fake, but is nervous the bars in Austin might not take it? Honestly, a couple of others and I want to tell Craig that Mary will have to sit this one out then. He said it's unfair because other girlfriends are going and it's crappy to exclude his girlfriend. I asked him if she even wanted to go or if she was too nervous about missing her Sigma Kappa philanthropy event. I know, crappy joke. But we think, number one, we planned this before they got together. And number two, we just shouldn't have to accommodate this girl. Like, Craig, come on. This is what you get for dating a girl that young. Number three, we all think it's creepy and just don't want to be around them. Like I said, we have younger sisters years older than her. Am I the idiot? Ah, uh, not the idiot. I'd either be direct that you're uncomfortable instead of making immature jokes that will offend him without getting your point across. I am not a fan of age gap relationships. I find them creepy. She's not even drinking age. That being said, you can decide to express that part or you can decide not to. Either way, you still have the right to say you're uncomfortable bringing someone below that age. There is difficulty altering the plans because of it and it simply isn't gonna work out. Understand if he's the only single dude, he will feel uncomfortable going and slighted. It's simply a tough pill to swallow. Unfortunately, that's the price he pays for his young girlfriend. Agree. Craig needs to understand that when he dates someone that young, it will come with exclusions as to what they can do. This is one of those times. Also, it's completely unreasonable to expect you to change the location of a trip you've already planned. So what, screw everybody else who's already looking forward to Austin? Could you imagine how awkward the trip would be if you changed it just for this one person who you just met? You are the idiot for judging your best friend's relationship. The age gap is eight years. That's nothing. And the older and more mature you all get, the more you will understand. And you are being quite cruel with shitty sorority jokes. Of course, all you'll end up doing is ruining a friendship. But it sounds like that would be okay with you too. I am the only girl in my family. I was the black sheep in many ways. My birthdays always come second to sports events. My parents never came to my school activities with excuses that my brothers needed them. My brothers have lived on and off with my parents since we turned 18. Not me. I decided to start working at 15 and I never turned back. My childhood wasn't happy. I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, basically giving my kids what I never had. However, that's really hard to do on a single income where I live. So I picked up a second job. Then I saved for 10 years. It came with a lot of sacrifice from both my husband and me. No vacations, no gifts or special occasions. During that time, everything went into savings. So when we had kids, I could be home with them. I ended up buying some rental properties to cover my income. All my brothers except one are now in debt and won't work. They have financially drained my parents. The one brother John and I became close after we became adults. His work ethic is a lot like mine. Unfortunately, John died about two weeks ago. My parents pulled me aside after his funeral when I was cleaning up. They let me know that my other brothers would need care, that they had no choice but to ask me to house them and take care of them since John couldn't send them any more money. Specifically, they want them and their kids to live in my rental properties since we all don't want that kind of environment around my young kids. If I allow them to be in my rentals, 
I know I will never collect money from them to cover any expenses. I would have to return to working a normal job again, leaving my kids with a nanny. So would I be the idiot if I told my parents no? My best friend said I might be an idiot because of my feelings towards my childhood, that I could be holding resentment against my brother for my parents' preferential treatment. So I am having doubts now. Absolutely not. You are not the idiot. Your parents are telling you to neglect your own children to take care of your two grown men and their families? You saved money to stay home with your children, not so you can take care of grown men with problems. They need to find jobs and help their own families. Regardless of your feelings about your childhood, you are not responsible for housing and supporting your ne'er-do-well siblings. Your parents have a lot of nerve. Yep, even if you had the best childhood imaginable, renting to family is always a dangerous idea. What do you expect it to do if they can't pay the rent? Of course, you'll have to let it go because they are family. And how dare you make them homeless over some money or property damage? Just say no. Don't give a reason because that gives them something to argue. Just no. We won't be discussing this any further and end the conversation. This situation was created because of your parents' bad parenting that taught these guys to be coddled and irresponsible. It's beyond galling that they have had the nerve to ask you to be responsible for the mess they made. Forcing them to accept the consequences of their actions and choices could finally be the best thing anyone's done for them. OP, your best friend is wrong. Your resentment isn't an issue here. The debt and no income thing is, and you are not the idiot. It doesn't sound like they're a good family to have, so maybe that will make them shun you and you won't have to deal with them anymore. Not only would you lose rental income, there's a good chance they'll trash those houses. So say no and regret nothing. My boyfriend's best friend, Josh, has been dating his girlfriend for nearly five years and he proposed to her last week. My boyfriend and I, on the other hand, have been dating for eight years and no ring to be seen. His best friend is already arranging the wedding planning with his fiance and I can't help but feel upset and mad about it. And I also feel like it's unfair how they got engaged before my boyfriend and me, and they'll most likely get married before us too. I don't know if I'm mad at them or if I'm mad at my boyfriends for not having any plans for the future. Whenever I discuss plans with him, he acts like he doesn't care. And then I see his best friend and his fiance how they are, and I feel sick. I asked my best friend's fiance to hang out and grab some lunch together, which is odd since we never got along this whole time and she was surprised that I invited her to do something like this. But I did so, even though I don't like her a lot. I needed her honest opinion of what she thinks of my situation. I'm an honest person and told her how I felt upset that they got engaged before us and how I don't see my relationship progressing the same way. She said that she understands why I'm upset because my boyfriend doesn't seem to put in the effort in an eight-year relationship and I have the right to feel dismissed along with my feelings. But she took offense because I'm upset she got engaged first. And she said that while she understands, it's not her and her fiance's fault. And they shouldn't be expected to wait until we get engaged first. She claimed I came off a bit confrontational the way I phrased it. And she wouldn't want to feel guilty for planning her wedding. Just because my relationship is not heading the same path as theirs. Am I the idiot? Yes, you are the idiot. Josh's engagement is by no means any of your concern. And telling his fiance that you're upset in the manner you did is an idiot thing to do. This is something that you need to seriously discuss with your boyfriend rather than be upset at Josh for deciding first. They aren't obligated to wait for you just because your relationship is longer than theirs. Josh's engagement shown a spotlight on problems you have with your boyfriend. You're dealing with it by shooting the spotlight rather than dealing with the problem that's been highlighted. Your boyfriend's lack of commitment if I'm reading this correctly, you are angry with your boyfriend for not proposing, even though you want to get married. So instead, you asked a person to lunch who you don't like at all to confront her. Why didn't you talk to your boyfriend instead? You know, the one who you want to spend the rest of your life with. If you want to be married, you need to use your words and express all this to him, not your boyfriend's best friend's fiance. If you can't talk to him about this, then you shouldn't be getting married. LOL, you are the idiot. 
And if I were your fiancé, I would never propose to you after seeing how you handled this. Your envy is showing. A true friend will be happy for and congratulate their friends when something positive happens to them. Instead, you're all bent out of shape because you're not getting what you want. This is a conversation you need to have with your boyfriend. Unfortunately, if he's happy with the status quo, you can't really change that. My ex and I have three kids. We've been divorced for four years and are usually pretty amicable. At first, we had 50-50 custody of the girls and nobody paid child support or alimony. Then two years ago, she got a job that required her to move three hours away and she has the girls every other weekend and was ordered to pay child support. She was struggling to sell her house and paying two mortgages was hard enough on her. So I told her that she didn't have to pay child support until things settled down. I'm pretty well off and can easily afford to take care of the girls without any help. So I didn't see the point in making her life harder. Things settled down and I never needed child support. So I never asked. A few months ago, my brother and sister-in-law passed away. So I became the legal guardian of their four kids. I can technically afford to take care of all seven kids independently, but some child support would help. I talked to my ex about how my circumstances have changed and I need her to pay child support now. She said, okay, as long as I could promise that the money would only be spent on our kids. I told her I couldn't do that. If I use the money to buy groceries, all the kids are going to eat the food. And if I use it to pay the mortgage and for the renovations I'm doing on the house to accommodate the extra people in the house, I'm not going to kick the kids out. I then told her I could put the money in savings accounts for our girls but I'll deduct the same amount of money from the savings accounts I've already set up. Unfortunately, that wasn't good enough for her either, and we haven't been able to agree. So I wanted to know if I was the idiot. Um, wow. That took a turn mid-story. I'm so sorry for your loss. You are not the idiot, OP. I think you need to tell her to comply with court orders to pay for child support. Groceries feed your kids. The mortgage puts a roof over your kids. The fact that other kids also live here now isn't her concern. She doesn't get to dictate what you do with the money. And obviously, you're not taking the money and allocating it in an account earmarked for a specific kid that isn't hers. Since she hasn't complied with the court order, tell her you'll get your lawyer involved and take her back to court. This is the overall problem with being nice and lenient with the order. First, you gave her an inch, and now she expects a mile. As soon as she could afford child support, you should have taken it. It isn't for you. It's for the kids. And as a primary caregiver, it is your job to look out for your children's interest. Even if that support was going into a rainy day fund for medical needs, a college fund, or any number of things. It's her responsibility to plan for and pay her fair share. So you messed up a bit here. I would stop talking with her about it. Remind her it is her obligation to pay. Tell her you want to protect your relationship and keep it civil. So anything further relating to the matter should be directed to your lawyer. Then stick to it and send her to your lawyer with any complaints. I can't believe your ex is being difficult knowing what you're going through. Update. I texted my ex and told her I was giving her a week to send a check for this month. And if I don't have it, we'll go through the courts for regular child support and back pay.